Let's start by doing an overview of Microsoft 365 subscriptions. There are multiple versions of Microsoft 365. First of all, on the enterprise side, we have Microsoft 365 E3 and E5, E5 being the one with the most features, as well as Microsoft 365 F1, which is for field workers. There is also a version of Microsoft 365 aimed at smaller enterprises called Microsoft 365 Business, a version for education called Microsoft 365 Education, and a version for the US government called Microsoft 365 Government. Let's take a look at those in detail. Microsoft 365 Business is an integrated solution that brings together best-in-class productivity tools, security, and device management capabilities for small to medium-sized businesses. Since this is aimed at smaller to medium-sized businesses, it's capped at a maximum number of 300 users. Over this, you'll have to use a Microsoft 365 Enterprise version. Microsoft 365 Business comes with Windows 10 Business, which is a special SKU that you cannot really buy directly because Windows 10 Business is basically Windows 10 Pro plus additional cloud-enabled features around security and identity. It also comes with Office 365 Business Premium, which includes your classic Office 365 features such as SharePoint, Exchange, Teams, Planner, and so on, and it also includes some SMB-only apps such as Microsoft Invoicing, Microsoft Bookings, MyLiQ, and so on. However, on the Enterprise Mobility and Security Suite, or EMS, it lags behind the Enterprise version of Microsoft 365 and does not contain features such as Azure Active Directory Premium. Those can be purchased separately as add-ons. Now, how much does it cost? Microsoft 365 Business is offered at $20 per user per month based on an annual contract if you purchase it directly from Microsoft. When purchased from Microsoft Partner, pricing can vary based on the services the partner provides and their pricing model for Microsoft 365 Business. If you want to see the full list of features, the best way to go is the Microsoft 365 Business Service description, for which you can find a link in the slides. Next up, let's talk about Microsoft 365 Enterprise. Microsoft 365 Enterprise is available in three different plans, as we have discussed earlier. First one being Microsoft 365 E3, which comes with an Office 365 E3 license, Windows 10 Enterprise, as well as the EMS suite. E5 includes all of E3's capabilities, as well as advanced security, voice, and data analysis tools. For example, E5 includes Office 365 E5, which has Power BI Pro, includes Azure Active Directory Premium 2 licenses, and so on. The last one, which is the F1, which is for first T-line workers or field workers. Those are users who usually do not spend their day in front of the computer, only use one when needed. It's also a lot cheaper than an E3 or E5 license, however, it's missing some features, such as being able to install Office on a computer. Those users can still use Office online, but simply cannot install the heavy client locally on a PC. Now a bit about pricing. Pricing for the enterprise version is not available on the public website, however, if you already have an Office 365 or Microsoft 365 subscription, you can see them in the billing section. Because I'm in Canada, it shows me the prices in Canadian dollars, so it might be a bit of a higher number, let's say, than in US dollars, but this gives you a good idea of how much it costs. The best way to purchase it if you don't have a subscription already is either to contact your Microsoft account manager or your Microsoft partner. Remember that prices can always change, but this is what I had as of May 2019, just to give you an idea. Comparing all of the Microsoft 365 plans can be a bit complicated in slides, especially as it has an ever-evolving set of tools that change from time to time. The best location to find the latest information is on the Compare All Microsoft 365 Enterprise Plans page. Now let's talk a bit about the industry, or vertical-specific ones, starting with Microsoft 365 Education. Microsoft 365 Education is a subscription that is only available to education clients such as colleges, universities, high schools, and so on. It also has additional features that are built specifically for education clients such as classroom management. 
Now I usually don't talk about licensing because Microsoft licensing is a separate PhD, which I don't have, however, Microsoft education is usually free for students when you buy it for educators, faculty, and staff. But always check with your Microsoft licensing expert because licensing can always change. Lastly, Microsoft 365 Government. Microsoft 365 Government is a version of Microsoft 365 hosted in the Microsoft US Government Community Cloud. You need to qualify as a government organization before purchasing. You cannot simply sign up for it. There are also multiple levels of the Microsoft 365 Government SKU depending on what type of information you will store in there and what certification your government agency might need. The three different levels are the Microsoft 365 Government GCC, GCC High, and the top one, which is the DOD. Now, let's talk about how to purchase Microsoft 365. While there are many ways, we'll cover the two main ones, which are either directly from Microsoft or from a Microsoft Cloud Solutions provider, also commonly called a CSP. Let's take a look at the differences between the two. First of all, when you buy from Microsoft, you pay a fixed fee, and the payment models are usually either per month or per year, while from a CSP, usually have more flexible payment options such as monthly, quarterly, yearly, bi-yearly, and so on. With Microsoft, some subscriptions, as we've seen in this module for the Microsoft 365 business, need an annual commitment, so you don't have as much flexibility of alternating number of workers throughout the year, versus a CSP where usually offer flexible commitment options. Next up, when you buy from Microsoft, you get the service, of course, that you pay for, as well as Microsoft 365 support for administrators, whereas some CSPs might offer some free training or support in order to get you to sign with them. Remember that the reasons why CSPs offer more services is because they, of course, get a commission from Microsoft on your license sales, and every CSP tries to offer different discounts or benefits in order for you to choose them as your partner. Don't hesitate to shop around, find a deal that works for you, and more importantly, find a CSP that you trust, because once you're with a CSP, it's not always that easy to switch to another one, so make sure you shop around and find the most trusted partner that offers you the best solution. Now let's talk a bit about Microsoft 365 support, and we'll talk about the official Microsoft way here. With Microsoft 365 support, administrators with the right role can open tickets through the Microsoft 365 Admin Center. When you open a ticket, you'll be contacted by phone, and as you can see on the screenshot here on the left, you have an estimated wait time until you get called. The next steps really depend on what the problem is and what debugging options are available. As for the slaw, I have put a screenshot here directly from Microsoft, and as you can see, it really depends on the severity and what subscription you are on, whether business or enterprise. For critical events, both options offer 24-7 technical support and one-hour response time, but after that, the available hours and response time are very different between business and enterprise. Now let's talk a bit about the Microsoft 365 service lifecycle. Since you are on a Microsoft 365 subscription, all of your services will always be up to date, and that includes your office programs installed on your computer, to your operating system, all the way to the productivity tools in Office 365. New features that get implemented go to certain stages before going fully public. Usually, Microsoft does a private preview with select customers to get their feedback and improve the feature, after which it goes into public preview. At this point, the feature set is usually defined, but they will test it here for scalability and if any other bugs are found. And finally, it's released to all tenants, and that is called general availability. It's important to know that the support level you get for a feature might vary until it's in general availability and preview features might not be very well or at all supported. This, of course, depends of the feature. For example, if you're in that private preview and you work directly with Microsoft, you might get the best support you've ever gotten. But if it's in public preview, you're just testing it out in your tenant and you go through the regular support channels, you might find yourself not supported at all because it's a preview feature. Lastly, some features in preview might be free or included part of the base plan, but some of them might require additional licensing once they reach general availability. 
This was more often the case with Office 365 standalone rather than with a Microsoft 365 subscription, but it's still something that can happen.